Hi and welcome to the first webisode in CSR's House Project series. Over the next four months we're going to follow the CSR house construction from foundation to finish, highlighting innovation in design, construction techniques and material use along the way. The project is the brainchild of CSR's CEO Rob Sindel. The aim is to improve the knowledge surrounding the choice and use of building materials to build your typical family home. We're going for eight star thermal performance as cost effectively as possible. The objective of the CSR house is actually quite straightforward. We want to demonstrate what is required to build energy efficient houses in Australia that are suitable for Australian conditions. There's too much confusion at the moment about what constitutes an energy efficient house and how it all fits together. We want to provide clarity by integrating all of our building elements to come up with an energy efficient house. The core issue is how do we reduce our energy consumption in the buildings in which we live and work. 30% of the energy consumption in Australia is through buildings at home and at work. And 40% of that energy is wasted by poor insulation, poor glazing and poor ceiling of the house. What we've noticed also around the world is the trends in building designs and in building performance. One of the reasons why we've chosen an eight star standard as being the focal point for the CSR house is because energy efficiency of buildings is the driver of international building design in 2011. And uh, many governments are now looking at building energy efficiency as one of the key uh, levers to, in, to provide a break while many other sources of energy are developed. How do we educate and influence government and building code authorities to develop the standards which mean more energy efficient houses? Out of the CSR House project, we'll learn those things, help influence those government bodies and really drive change in Australia. CSR recently established the Innovations Group as the central research activity to uh, help us keep abreast of the changing market needs and uh, really maintain CSR's position as the market leader in building products and systems and materials across the Australian and New Zealand markets. Once the house is completed, it will become a display and research centre. The research activities will include collection of data on the building envelope performance, on the thermal comfort and the energy usage within the house. Uh, the display side of the house will be able to demonstrate to consumers and builders how the materials go together to deliver the final package of the house. Apart from being one of the oldest building material manufacturers in Australia, with a 75 year history of giving builders the material they can rely on, CSR has its heritage deeply seated in sustainability principles. Today CSR has the widest range of products under one banner. They're one of the few manufacturers whose products can be found in nearly every building constructed in Australia and New Zealand. You'd be hard pressed to find an Aussie or Kiwi tradesman who hasn't used CSR products at some stage in their career. Using CSR's range of products was part of the brief. Gareth Cole from Ecology in Sydney won the job over six other architects. The, the brief for designing this particular house was to make it as a, a contemporary house so that it was acceptable in the marketplace. Uh, I, the other things were it had to be ecologically sustainable and of course it had to be affordable and buildable. And with those th things in mind what we're trying to say to people and to the general public is that you can build an ecologically sustainable house that is affordable. I was quite delighted to find, in, as, as I went through the various products, the ways in which not only the product was being produced, but the, the way it can be used in a building. There are small details that we've had to attend to, which we were very encouraged that CSR were already looking at, which is you know, the, the, the level of insulation, the air gaps that you put around buildings, and all these things combined can uh, contribute to a system which makes the building much more thermally effective. We hear the terms thermal efficiency, thermal comfort and sustainability a lot, but what do they really mean? Professor Dayo Prasad from New South Wales University can explain. A sustainable home by broad definition is when a home draws from the environment as much as it puts into the environment. So you're looking at issues of passive solar design, where you're minimizing the use of energy and other resources uh, to maintain comfortable surrounding for people. Uh, and you're using materials, etc., that are going to have the minimum impact in terms of where the material comes from and where it ends up. 
A sustainable home is also a low carbon home. Uh, you need to have a low carbon footprint in all buildings these days. Uh, low carbon homes are not uh, necessarily more expensive. They can be cheaper to build as well as cheaper to run over its life cycle. The most important place to start in guaranteeing a building's energy efficiency and thermal comfort is to ensure that the building envelope is efficient. This means thinking about where the house is orientated, how much air leakage is acceptable and how much thermal performance you need, heat gain or heat loss. There are three ways of losing or gaining heat through the walls, floor, ceiling and roof of your house. The primary source of radiant heat is the sun and enters the house mainly through the roof and windows. Building material will absorb radiant heat and re-radiate in all directions. Heat is always transferred to cooler areas. Convection occurs in air voids within walls, roof spaces and subfloors. As air in a void heats up, it causes pockets of warm air to rise above pockets of cool air. This means air is constantly being drawn through small gaps or cracks in your walls, floor and roof structure. Conduction is when heat energy is absorbed by building materials and transferred through the material to the cooler side. Heat is generally transferred inside in summer, making your home hotter, or to the outside in winter, making your heating much less efficient. The best way to reduce heat loss or gain is to make sure your building envelope has glazing orientation and performance combined with the appropriate shading to manage the radiant heat flow according to your climate and is well built to avoid air leakage through small gaps, cracks, window frames and door frames. And has appropriate levels of insulation, ventilation and heavyweight materials in the right locations. My company is a, a company of architects and we specialise in doing ecological work. When we take on a, on a project, of course, the most important thing is to go to site and actually check the site out. Using a compass, you can find out where, where north is and where true north is. Having established that we've now got good north orientation to the building, we ensure that the building in the north-south direction is quite shallow. In the east-west direction, we make sure it's quite long. That means that across the northern side, we can put as many rooms as we possibly can facing towards the north. If it's facing towards the north with the right, the, the, the right level of glass uh, and the correct sort of type of glass, then the glass to floor area ratio is worked out correctly. You can have a building that performs brilliantly in summertime and brilliantly in wintertime. One of the things that we try to incorporate in the, in the house is a good level of cross ventilation. Now this is for summer cooling of course. And if, if you look through, through the plans that we've actually, actually produced, we've actually shown a number of breeze paths that actually travel through the house. The average house today it has between 25 and 30 air changes per hour. That means that you don't have a choice. You're, it's, it's doing that for you anyway. So in the middle of winter time, it's a freezing cold day, there are the winds, winds blowing through, through the house and underneath the house and the house is, is cold. What we're trying to do is get down to below 10, which is quite innovative to try and do that. That means that you still give people the opportunity to open doors and windows so they can facilitate it if they want, but if they don't want it, they have the choice to close the house down and minimise those air changes, minimising heat loss. Sustainability, innovation and the use of new technology are encouraged by the building regulatory bodies as long as they still comply with the technical provisions for design and construction. The BCA sets minimum compliance standards for health, safety, fire safety, uh, amenity and energy efficiency in buildings. The energy efficiency provisions were introduced in 2003 and the current minimum standard for the energy efficiency provisions is six stars. And what we're looking at in the CSR House is to capture the very best thinking from around the world and, and across Australia to make the very best product choices for making this CSR House a most energy efficient and high performing house for the future. Efficient operational thermal performance is just one part of maintaining sustainability principles. Another important aspect to think about is the energy used to actually make the materials, their embodied energy. Choosing a product with a low embodied energy will make a huge difference to the comfort, cost effectiveness and the overall carbon footprint of your home. Well, the operational efficiency and operational energy um, for running the house is important. We also wanted to make sure that the house sat on the environment as lightly as possible. So to do this, we've conducted a uh, full life cycle analysis of all products used in the house. And it gives us an understanding of the environmental impact to manufacture, transport and erect um, these products in situ in a house environment. 
we also need to look at the waste management principles, uh, the waste generated during construction, but also the end of life waste created by the destruction or demolition of the house over its normal expected lifespan. Using the uh, Housing Industry Association's Green Smart principles, we registered this house as a Green Smart house. So we're on a really exciting journey here. What we want to do is bring together the best of our products to really solve this issue for industry. It's one that Australia faces, it's, the one, it's one that the world faces. If we can help solve this issue, then we really will change the landscape in Australia of energy efficient housing. Well, it's a pretty big challenge. It's the first time a manufacturer has put their reputation, their expertise and products on the line like this. We've got a great design, some ambitious aims and just four months to do it. I hope you'll join us as we follow the CSR House on its journey to completion. We'll be back with the next instalment very soon. In the meantime, you can follow us on csr.com.au or on YouTube to keep up with the progress.